What's up everybody, it's Bulldozer here. First off, let me start this video by saying this. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you to all of our men and women that has picked up that rifle and served our country. Or even if you haven't picked up a, picked up a rifle, but you still served our country, thank you. Because the things that we do is because of the men and women in our armed forces. And yes, I said men and women. It's not just the men's world. We got women out there. It's also doing their job too. So again, thank you to all the men and women that is in our armed forces in this day, especially for you guys. So how'd you like that new intro? Uh, it's new for 2013. And uh, this is vlog one of 2013. And I got a bunch of information I'm going to throw in here. And to give you an update on what's been going on with me since we have, haven't had no videos uploaded. Begin with, um, you know, just that, you know, I've, for the last few years I've helped out in a haunted house. Okay. Well, helping out in a haunted house and then putting on your own haunt, your yard haunt, it's two different things. So I scaled back from what I was going to do and just started getting ready for next year. But then the stuff that I was going to put out, I couldn't put out because of Hurricane Sandy. I mean, it literally rained almost all day, Halloween day. So even, you know, the one prop that I did get, get the, was able to put out, I had to take and put a tarp over it just so it couldn't get messed up. Now this prop, it came straight from Steve over at Yard Hunter 5. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate all your videos you did. It really helped out a lot. Um, what I actually end up doing with my cauldron creep is taking and using a Shashu Mazazer inside of it and um, to get the stick to work because I wanted to get something out there um, that was new that I didn't have last year. And this, and this was the best thing that I got out there. Yeah, but what I did was I used a Shasu massager, that's how you pronounce it, um, to make the stick go around. And uh, I just used a, uh, I actually, the one I picked up is the kind that you gotta grind off the head to. So what I did was I took a two inch end cap, screwed it to the rubber head that slides over to the the mechanism, whatever you want to call it, that spins around, and I put some grease inside there and grease in, on the bottom of the stick, so that allowed it to have the free motion to slide around. And that way, that's where how I got the rotation. That way, you didn't hear that grinding noise as it was moving around, and it worked out pretty well. I only needed it to work one day, so I got what I needed it out of. Next year, it'll be done the correct way, and I plan on getting you know, a windshield wiper motor to put in there and, and do it the, the correct way. But I needed something that would work. You know, just something I can put together real fast. I, mean, I literally, I built this this cauldron creep in maybe two or three days. I mean, it, I, mean I think it took longer to, you know, to actually strap the, the, ske the skeleton down and, and do the head motion, get the head working right, then do everything else on it. But next year I plan on doing what you did, Steve, on yours and using the, the foam on the bottom of it, the great stuff, and putting lights on inside of it. But I need to watch your video that you was talking about on how to use the flicker circuit. So I have to go back and, and check that out because you said you used the flicker circuit, or the flicker, um, I guess it's a resistor or whatever you call it, on yours to make your lights flicker. And that was pretty cool. Even my wife was ecstatic when she saw yours. And uh, when she walked into the living room, I mean, I was putting it together and everything and she, and she liked it. But then when I, I put the LED lights on it and I had it moving and everything, oh, she was like, she was livid. She loved it. I mean, she was, you know, everybody just absolutely loved it. I got great compliments on it. Um, I just wish it wouldn't have rained so much because I got it up against the, uh, 
the tarp that you'll see and so I couldn't put it in the front yard where it was easier for everybody to see but yeah and what I did was the little cooler that I had I put the ice in so I run the fogger through that and what that does is that allows the um, the fog to get chilled so it gets a little more thicker so you'll see in the video how it, how when it comes out of the cauldron it, it it's a lot more thicker and I think it worked out really well for something I literally put together like the last four or five days before Halloween I can't complain and hell I still have two Walgreens skellies that I haven't even touched yet and I'm thinking about taking one of those skellies and uh, start messing with the latex on that stuff uh, so I'll be I'll be scanning your guys' channels out there. I know uh, I think um, the Auto Hunters got got a video on there, and um, I can't. There's another guy I cannot think of his name offhand. Um, they on it. I'll post it right here because I know I'll think of it as soon as I get done recording here. But he does a lot of great stuff. He is really good with the latex. <coughs> Excuse me really good with the latex and um, done a really nice job on some of the stuff I've seen this man make and uh, so like I said I got two full scullies that uh, never even touched and I got a whole year to toy around with them so enough you know I can always rip it off and start over right I hope so <laughs> but uh, if you got videos that um, you've worked with latex on a scully do me a favor send me a video response it's easy to do. I mean, if you're watching this video now, just go and send me a video response. And you know, so it'll save me time from actually going through everybody's channels and searching everybody's channels. So if you've worked with latex again on building up a, a, a skeleton or anything like that, do me a favor. Again, send me a video response, save me some time, because I do plan on taking at least one of these and grusing them out. And uh like I said, I got a whole year to toy around with this stuff, and and I've got a major, major project in the works, and I'm I got a, what I call you know the man cave what Godflesh has. Well, my my man cave is a Cincinnati Bengals uh, room downstairs, and all the walls are orange, and that's where I have my projector at, and I've got a uh, a 107 inch uh, projector screen. That uh, that I use, um, but like I said, there's nothing like playing Call of Duty on a 107-inch screen. I mean, you gotta love it. But that's when it's all put together. Right now, it's not put together. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take one of those walls and uh, I'm gonna make a special project on one of those walls. And Dead with Dave, I'm gonna follow your video that you did on your wall that you did in your room. Uh, so. I want to follow you step by step on how you did your stuff on your wall because, like I said, I've got a wall that's just studs, and I got a great opportunity to, um, you know, move my videos from the outside to the inside, and uh, that way I don't have to worry about no rain, no no wind or anything, and I can bring nice, crisp, clear videos. And I might be able to do some live segments on either YouTube or Blog TV. Uh, who knows? Because this is only the beginning. I mean, you guys are going to see a lot out of me, and uh, I hope you don't get mad because you're going to see a lot out of me. Um, people that's watching this video, as a reminder, if you are Call of Duty followers, subscribers to this channel, you're going to want to go to my new channel. It's Call of Duty Dozer Style, okay? Call of Duty Dozer Style. Black Ops 2 comes out midnight Tuesday, Monday into Tuesday. And all the videos that I'm going to be doing is going to be on that channel. They will not be on this channel. So if you're on this channel and you're looking for Call of Duty stuff, you need to go subscribe to that new channel. This channel here is strictly for haunt-related videos only. That way my haunt subscribers has got their own channel and my Call of Duty subscribers have their own channel. And that way, you know, something's not getting uploaded where you're not going to be interested in. But here is a clip of my... Um, snapshot of my layout that I was going to use this year. Okay, here you look at the diagram from my haunt. If you look in the upper right hand corner, that's the entryway coming from the front of, of the uh, the front sidewalk. 
Then the very first turn to your left, that's actually the entrance into the haunt. It looks like an ice hockey stick. When you go down that very first line, like let's say it's in the ice hockey stick, it's actually a curtain that people are going to have to walk through. And then as soon as they walk through, boom, they're getting hit with an air cannon. Before they're even expecting anything, the automatic, I'm, I'm taking them off their, uh, off their rocker and I'm hitting them with an air, an air blast. And then when they make this first turn, it's a little, it's a spire area. Now, this is one of the things I was wanting to ask everybody about. I can't remember if I already mentioned it in the video or not, but I might be mentioning it later in the video because I'm adding this, this portion of the video on. But this is a four foot room. Four foot um, wall, left to, re left to right, and then you know front to back, a four foot panel. Is that too small? Should I make it an eight foot uh, room? I mean, because th there's room where I, I can, I can, you know, I can add on to that if I need to be. I can move all this down a little bit. But um, is that too small? Um, me designing this myself for the first time, you know, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. So, but as you go on, there's another air cannon you're going through. There's gonna be a zombie prop. Go around the corner, there'll be another air cannon you're gonna hit. Now I'm, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have things hanging from the ceiling through here, and there'll be other stuff that I'm gonna add on to it. Don't know exactly what yet. Get a whole year to figure this out. But um, when you make that first right, I see that uh, I don't know if you can read it or not. It says the caretaker. That is the main prop of 2013, folks. This is a costume that you can actually wear, bought from the horrordome.com. And on a six foot tall person, this costume is. Seven, seven and a half foot tall. You heard me correctly. Seven and a half foot tall. He is awesome. And I actually wore him a couple of years, but it's like his head is so, so heavy on your shoulders. You can't, you can't wear him that long. So then you continue on with the hunt. I got my black box. I've got the vampire head in it and stuff like that. And I'll be adding more things to it. But I wanted to get let you guys take a look at this so I can get your input on this. Does this, do these areas look too small? I know the walkway is okay with the four foot, but like these rooms, should I make those rooms two four foot panels so they're eight foot panels? And so I need to stretch this stretch this out a little bit. What do you think? Do you think um, the way I have this laid out right now? Do you think that's going to be okay? Give me your input. Um, anything that uh, you can help me with, I would greatly appreciate it. I do have one quick quick escape route, which is right there by the caretaker. So if they get really scared and can't go no further, there's a place for them to exit right there. And um, I do plan on having somebody working in that area also. And there'll be some drop panels and stuff in this hallway. And I, and I'm just thinking that with this air can and stuff, that might be a good place for a drop a drop panel but um, yeah because with the caretaker the reason why I got this layout the way I do it if any of you are asking that or thinking that um, I'm using these air cannons to constantly keep take them off their their toes I guess is the word I'm looking for but um, after that third air shot they're not going to know what to expect and being it so soon as soon as they make that turn they're not going to really recover from that air blast and all of a sudden they're getting they're get nailed by the caretaker. So that should be an awesome scare and I will be using my photo software on that and that's going to make it makes for some great pictures. And this video here actually will be live on blog TV that I will be running. Um, I will do the same thing that Halloween Hellmouth is doing. And uh, I will get me a Premiere account that will allow me to run, um, I think it's a half hour um, live that, that he can do. And right to the right of the caretaker, that's my control center. And that's where, the, that's where all the components and everything will be. So that's, that's, that's it. Tell me what you think. My other question is, as you're looking at this, I mean, it's not a real wide, um, it's not real wide. Um, I got the one sheet here. Okay, I've got this sheet here, and I can tell you that it is exactly 
One, two, three, four. It's five panels wide. Um, if you go back from um, the far back left hand corner of the picture you're looking at to the top of that, it's only five panels wide, which is um, what, 20 feet wide? So, and I could actually make it a little wider if I want. I don't think I can get a full panel width wide, but if I do, that's going. I'm going to be cutting into my emergency exit um, because I definitely want to have something there because of the fact that I think um, after people get hit with the air cannon and then they get hit with the caretaker, there might be a lot of people that just because of those two quick hits, they might not want to continue on. So I need to make sure they have a, an easy exit there. But um, yeah, it's 20 feet wide. It's uh, it's 24 feet uh, long. So it's 24 by 20. That's the size of the haunt that I'm working with. And it's a first year for me. Um, so again, tell me what you think. I'm looking for input. Now I can actually expand that layout. I mean I can go a few more feet into the yard. It all depends on how I how I do it. But you know, I've got I've already got laid I already know how many numbers of panels I need. I need actually 32 panels, I think it was, for that. Um, my question another question for you guys, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of information in this video. I apologize for a lengthy video. Another question for you guys, leave it in the comments. A couple of these rooms are four foot rooms. Is that too small or should I make the room eight foot? Um, and like I said, I mean, it's basically just, you know, just a small, just a small scare and keep them moving. Um, do you think it's too small or should I make it an eight foot, an eight foot room, which, which would be two panels and then continuing on with the uh, the walkway wall. Again, let me know. I'm looking for you guys to give me information on the stuff that I'm going to be doing because I want to do this, do the best job I can. And you know, people that's already done this before. I'm you know, I'm looking to you guys and the group I belong to, Southwest Hunters of Ohio. I plan on hitting uh, quite a few of their groups. Uh, meet and treat, meet and take, I think they, that's what it's called uh, this year. And the cool thing about it is they, have, uh, they meet right around the corner from my dad's house. So I can go meet new people, do haunt related uh, stuff, and see my dad at the same time. I mean, it doesn't get no better than that. Because uh, my dad lives like 45 minutes away from where I live at. So that works out well. But uh, so th there's a few little, a few little um, snippets. A little bit of information, and um, like I said, I don't want to make it no longer than it is. But again, this is video one, as you see above here, video one. And uh, oh, oh, I almost forgot. I got one important piece of information. I, how am I looking? Um, how, do, how do I look to you guys out there? Because I am down now. Have lost 34 pounds. So I'm still losing the weight. I lost a large chunk of weight fast, um, but I'm still losing weight. And I was actually looking at a video, and if I get the chance, I will add it before I run my um, my sign off. But uh, see if I can find a video where I can take a still shot of and put a video of of me now. Um, I think my face is starting to see, starting to be a lot skinnier. I can tell you, my, I can notice the difference in my pant size. I mean, it's amazing what just 34 pounds can do to you. Um, I mean, I'm a lot more energized. And it's only 34 pounds, and I got a long ways to go. Holy cow! If I lose the weight I want to lose, jeez, I might be making two videos a day. <laughs> but uh, um, again. Um, bringing you guys on this journey like I said still uh, 34 pounds so um, 
I can't remember offhand what the scale weighed in. I think it was 352 was what the scale weighed in at. I think it was 352. But um, getting closer to that goal, and um, my my goal is to hit that 350 skate uh, stage, because then that's going to um, put me at um, between 75 and 100 pounds to go where I want to go. I would like to get around the 250 to 275 um, stage. The problem is that I don't know if I can get down that far because I might be a big gentleman, but the problem is I got huge legs and my legs are not all fat. I mean, my legs are huge. I got a lot of muscle in my legs. I used to do a lot of biking. Um, people in Ohio might have heard the MS-150. I used to do that every year. In fact, my daughter was born the day after I came back from the MS-150. I was asleep in uh, my wife's delivery room, woke up with her bed surrounded with doctors freaking out. And I didn't know what in the world was going on. You know, you're, I'm exhausted. I just did a 150 mile bike ride. You, you start out, uh, again, for the people here in Cincinnati, you start out at Kings Mill High School. You go from Kings Mill High School to Wilmington University. You stay all night, you party, get up the next morning, you go from Wilmington University to downtown Columbus, Ohio. Okay, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. It takes two hours to drive to Columbus, Ohio. Just a second. Yeah, it takes two hours to drive to Columbus, Ohio from, from where I live at. And I biked that in two days. So I used to do that every day. 150 miles, or not every day, but every year. 150 miles, and I've done other bike bike rides and stuff like that. So I've got huge, I used to bike all over the place because I have epilepsy, so I'm not allowed to drive. So that's how I got everywhere. I literally biked everywhere. I used to have, <laughs> this is pretty funny. I used to have the, the, lean, the lean and bars that you put on your bike. I had a stereo mount to those. And it was, I was like a motorcycle going down the street. These things were so loud <laughs> that people would hear me riding past them on the sidewalk. I was, my, my bike was so loud. I was on a, on a, uh, a 10 speed bicycle. But yeah, I, I used to have a, um, I forget what the name of the bike was. It was a, uh, I had a, a racing frame, one of those frames you can pick up with one finger. But yeah, I used to bike all over the place. So it's, I don't think I'll ever lose um, all the weight in my legs. But uh, cause like I said, I think once I get more definition, I think the, um, uh, the muscles will, will really start showing out. Cause I still do a lot of walking and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, I can, I can notice that I can notice the difference. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference or not, but here, let me, let me, whoops, if I can do this right. I'm following the camera. Uh, I have to cut, I have to cut and paste. I'm trying to get myself as as I keep wanting to follow the camera, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've blabbered on long enough. I've, I've missed everybody out there, and um, this is the dozer, and I'm back starting the video for the 2013 Haunt Build. Get your scare on, and I'm out of here.